So today in this video, we're going to be growing hydroponic peppers. More specifically though, we're going to be seeing if aerating the water versus not aerating the water has any significant difference. Now I did do this exact same experiment just a little while ago in a two-part video I did with basil. Um, now basil doesn't re necessarily require a lot of oxygen at the root level to really grow, but I did the experiment to see if there would be any differences. And there was some differences that I noticed, but nothing significant. And I talk a little more science talk in those videos, so pH and TDS of the water. But I'm gonna avoid that in this video. But if you wanna watch those videos, they will be in the links below. Um, in this video here, we're gonna be growing this type of pepper. It is an Asian hot pepper. Uh, it says Big Thai Hybrid. Now, I don't know if I've ever actually eaten these at a restaurant or anything like that before, but I can tell you I haven't grown them. Uh, so at the end of this experiment, I will be doing a taste test. So if there maybe isn't a difference in growth, maybe there's a difference in taste. Um, so when I started this experiment off, uh, I started off with three seedlings per net pot, or three seeds per net pot. Uh, and then I removed the ones that were doing poorly uh, to make them all about even. So they're all starting out all about the same. Uh, there's actually even one small seedling in each method. Uh, just That's just how it happens. So I put one in each just to make them all about as even as I can be. Um, and you can see that from these pictures here. Uh, also, this video here is going to be having a time lapse using a Brino TLC 200 Pro. I uh, just got this time lapse camera, so this is going to be something very different from than I've done in the past. Um, now, it's going to be actually taking one picture every five minutes from start to finish. Uh, and I've already reviewed some of the footage actually from when I started off with the seeds and it's looking pretty good. So I hope you enjoy this time lapse while we transition into segment two of this video. This is probably one of the best time lapses I've ever done, both with the ability to capture something that would otherwise be impossible to notice and the ability to observe the inarguable conclusiveness to this experiment. As the growth unfolds, you start to notice as the plants get larger, they start moving before the lights turn off, as if they anticipate the upcoming darkness. I believe this is simply a sign that they have adapted to the lighting hours, which is interesting because it shows they have some form of internal clock or at least muscle memory. The day cycle was around 17 hours, but it may appear that it's shorter in the video. This is just the way I sped up the video because I wanted the night cycle to play slower to better watch how the plants move around. Also the night cycle appears to be almost as bright as the day cycle. This is just the camera adjusting its exposure. The night cycle is actually only about as bright as a full moon. As the plants grow larger, you can clearly see that the aerated method is growing much better. And you can even start to notice that plants in a non-aerated method start to develop a nitrogen deficiency with the lower leaves turning yellow. If I had not had the ability to observe the root growth, I would not have understood why aerating the water gave significantly better results. Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one, but I'm going to circle back to that shortly. For validity to this experiment, I mixed the hydroponic solution in a 5 gallon bucket with a measured 4 gallons. I then divided it into 2 buckets with 2 gallons each to be poured into each plant container. I then repeated that process so both plant containers had 4 gallons each. This ensures that any slight variations in the mixes would be ruled out so that both plant containers have identical mixtures. I found this to be easier than mixing 8 gallons in a large garbage can. Throughout this experiment, I did not add water or nutrients to either method to ensure there would be no advantages or disadvantages to either method. I instead changed out the solution to keep the balance and also made sure the pH of the solution stayed the same in both methods. Now for the answer as to why aerating the water worked better for this type of plant. If you look at this photo on the non-aerated bucket, you can see the root started growing outside of the net pot, but then stopped. This is because it has been air pruned. The humidity in the air simply was not enough to keep the tips of the roots alive. Over here in the aerated bucket, you can see all those side growing roots have grown and reached the water. Without getting into water chemistry, as this is a factor as well, simply put, 
As the water bubbles reach the surface and pop, this creates water vapor and collects on the exposed roots, helping them continue to grow and reach the solution. And root mass is directly proportional to plant size and health, which was clearly seen in this experiment, especially in the non-aerated method with all the plants being different sizes. The largest one has the most roots, though it was still not growing as well as even the smallest plant in the aerated method. This video also gives light as to why some other YouTube videos show several plants growing in the same container with aeration, but the plants directly above the aeration are doing better. While oxygen at the roots is important, throughout this experiment it became obvious very early on as to what was happening. The new side roots simply were getting wet in a way that's similar to aeroponics when water is sprayed on the roots instead of being submerged. So how about that? Now do not take this as the end all be all. Uh, different plants have different growth characteristics. Uh, DWC is more about aerating a solution to keep the bacteria from becoming anaerobic, uh, such as in aquaponics or other methods. And this is exactly what I observed. Uh, the roots were clearly more abundant and smelled fresher and healthier when the water was aerated, while the non-aerated method smelled slightly anaerobic. This video is not just proving the cracky method, it's just showing how aeration can be beneficial. In some cases, aeration will have no difference versus cracky, as seen in the videos I linked below that I mentioned earlier. Now, I was going to do a taste test in this video, but just to keep things short, uh, I'm going to be putting that in an upcoming video. Uh, so if you like this video and you're interested in seeing the fruiting phase of this experiment, then you'll know what to do. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.